Within the Johnny Silverhand flashbacks, there tends to be one character that stands out. Who is this? Well, you might remember him for the split second he's there. Yes, the split second. Shaitan. Yeah, the mercenary completely chromed out who got knocked out of the fight. How this bullet didn't bounce off of him? Who knows? Doesn't really matter though, seeing as this wasn't actually how the 2023 Arasaka raid played out. You see, Silverhand is an unreliable narrator, and it's likely his engrammatic memories were tampered with long before being placed onto the relic. So there isn't much weight to what we are seeing in 2077's version of events. If you felt that the character Shaitan was underutilized or downright don't care about him at all due to Silverhand distorting his role to that of a weak mercenary, I have some information for you that will completely change your perspective on this full Borg mercenary, as well as explain what possibly happened to him after the raid. So, Cyberpunk 2077 is actually the sequel to a series of tabletop RPGs, these being produced by Mike Pondsmith and his company Artalzorian Games grouping in sourcebooks such as Cyberpunk 2020, Cyberpunk Red, and various other titles. The majority of the information found on Shaitan is actually from Solo of Fortune 2 and Firestorm Shockwave. Solo of Fortune 2 looks at the histories of the Solo character class and how it has changed from 2013 to 2020, as well as what has changed in the world outside of Night City in that time gap. There's even a top 10 list of the best solos available to hire. Guess who we happen to find within this prestigious list? That's right, the full Borg, Shaitan. Interestingly enough, this excerpt does him far more justice than 2077 did in its opening to Silverhand. This is what it has to say about Shaitan. There are a lot of people out there gunning for the corpse. It seems that you can't swing a dead cat without hitting some corporate hate group or another. Most are fairly general. They want to destroy a media corpse or agri-corpse. They want to save the environment or the whales or something. Few hate a specific company, at least none of the large and vocal groups, and even fewer have personal reasons. Even so, it seems that Shaitan has a thing for Arasaka. He will take any job he can get away with but it must be against Arasaka, and it must have some serious collateral damage possibilities. In the last few years, Shaitan has gone from a good solo with a reasonable reputation to a great solo with a phenomenal success record. Shaitan has made the destruction of all things Arasaka paramount in his mind. He will not use Arasaka products, nor will he work with those who do. He accomplishes whatever mission he is hired for and spends the rest of his time trashing Saburo's stuff. He has even been known to occasionally create or modify jobs just so he can destroy Arasaka property. Why? No one is sure. Has been advanced by Shaitan's mother or other close female relative was once violated by a member of the Arasaka family, probably Saburo. He has honed his mind and rebuilt his body for this task only. His type of single-handed crusade would be laughable had he not managed to somehow elude capture and accomplish these objectives for over three years. Hope Sabro sleeps with the lights on. Now try to say Shaitan is a badass. Alongside this, we get to see him in a much more stylish and threatening Eclipse Covert Operations full conversion. Compared side by side, you tell me what looks more like an Arasaka hating Solo. Now that you have a rundown on who Shaitan is, and what makes him unique when compared to the average solo? It's time we get around to answering the big question. What really happened to Shaitan during the 2023 raid? Like I said earlier, the majority of the information we can find is in the Firestorm Shockwave sourcebook that completely covers the 2023 Arasaka raid as both an adventure for DM and their players as well as a story to read, similar to other adventures such as Black Dog from Cyberpunk Red. On page 137, we find the complete story of Johnny Silverhand's actual death during the raid. It goes much differently from what we see in 2077. Alpha Team was suddenly attacked by Adam Smasher and a group of Arasaka troopers taking down many of the Militech operatives and Lobos in the first attack, badly injuring Thompson and pinning down the rest of the team in the labs. While both groups fired at each other, 
Spider Murphy snuck to her data suitcase in order to connect to the net and scatter the various portions of Alt Cunningham, each tagged with a marker with the hopes of finding them someday. During these events, Johnny, who had been knocked off by the initial attack, managed to stand up. With the Militech SMG on one hand and his Melorian on the other, he shouted and provoked Smasher, futilely emptying his gun on the Borg. Smasher turned around and fired his auto shotgun at him, cutting Silverhand in half. Shaitan, taking advantage of this distraction, grappled and immobilized Smasher, telling the rest of the crew to leave. Spider Murphy tried to reach Silverhand, but Rogue stopped her, telling the Netrunner he was gone. Spider reached inside her jacket and pulled out a data slug all had downloaded her long ago. Whispering she was sorry to Johnny, Spider inserted the chip into the back of the dying rocker's skull. Spider then helped Rogue and the surviving Lobos to drag the wounded Thompson into the elevator. So, obviously from just this information alone, Shaitan went toe to toe with Adam Smasher, who had even been wearing his Dai Oni armor during the fight, was considered top of the line at the time, only accessible by someone like Smasher. This feat alone is very impressive, and in my book, Mark Shaitan down as a Night City legend easily. This didn't exactly have the best outcome for Shaitan himself though. The next time we see him is page 140, during Morgan Blackhand and Adam Smasher's encounter on the Arasaka rooftop. Shaitan isn't quite his full boar conversion though. Smasher has instead ripped him apart to his bare bones biopod to be carried around like a toy, waving him around to taunt Blackhand into a duel. It works though, and Blackhand initiates the fight though not aiming to be lethal, seeing as his only goal is to grab the biopod away from Smasher and make a break for it before the nuke explodes. There is clearly an unknown factor at play though, seeing as the nuke goes off right under the two of them. There's a key piece of information provided to the DM about this encounter in relation to Shaitan's biopod. It states, They can, however, save Shaitan, whose biopod will also be flung about by the collapse of a tower. Can they catch it? If not, his biopod can be found in the rubble, amazingly intact despite the fall. But the dueling duo's fate is left uncertain. So, it doesn't establish a complete and linear ending to Shaitan and what happens to him, but it does leave it relatively open-ended, seeing as it's made very clear that his biopod in no scenario is destroyed. So there's a few different routes we can plan out on what happened to Shaitan and where he could possibly be by the year of 2077. The first of which I'd like to lay out is the possibility of Blackhand canonically retrieving Shaitan's biopod after the explosion, getting it to safety and even in a new conversion. While this isn't the implied scenario at the time of Firestorm Shockwave being written, we now know it's a possibility due to Mike Pondsmith's statements on his Reddit account. He's made it very clear to the fan base that Morgan Blackhand survived the explosion and has a follow-up story up until at least 2045. Due to Blackhand's primary goal in this battle being to retrieve Shaitan and escape, in the event of his survival I find it very doubtful that he left Shaitan's biopod and instead ran off. I can very well see Blackhand and Shaitan's story between 2023 and 2077 being intertwined, also explaining Shaitan's absence since then. Him and Blackhand have been completely off the radar, working on some sort of objective that we, the player base, haven't been clued in on just yet. The next possibility would be that, just like the Shockwave sourcebook implies, Shaitan is recovered by the player characters, which are just hired edge runners for the raid. This would mean that he's brought back into the protection of Militech and placed into a new conversion, though this will leave the question of why he hasn't been seen since 2023 if he got Borg back up. While he could be remaining extremely covert and vigilant since his return, avoiding leaving any possible clues to his whereabouts, there is also a chance that he, just like many others, were hunted down by Arasaka. This is made all the more obvious when we take a glance at the Queen of the Afterlife, Rogue. Silverhand even makes a point of questioning Rogue, her wealth, and her survival after the 2023 raid. Chose a cozy life for yourself. I'm just curious what it cost you. We all pay a price for the choices we make. I'm no exception. That what you tell yourself when you're cashing corp checks? 
That's what I tell myself when I stand over the graves of the crew from the Atlantis. Rogue clearly has been under the payroll of a corporation, just as many other fixers have done in the past. She just managed to make the most out of it. It becomes blatantly clear during the chipping in quest line what corp she's been working for and providing information to. Oh my, Rogue. <clears throat> you and me not playing for the same team anymore? <clears throat> Guess I'm not at all surprised. Seems your specialty. Slipping shivs in the backs of allies. We're a smasher. Huh. You too familiar? Everybody knows Rogue. Living legend that she is. Ever wonder how Rogue survived after the attack on the tower? How in hell no one ever hunted her down? Her alone. <clears throat> Out of all that Atlantis trash. Cause I do. I truly wonder how far she had to go to set herself up so comfy. These two clips and Rogue's position of power makes a pretty clear image for us. After the 2023 raid, Rogue, to save herself, sold out to Arasaka, turning over the information she had and instead working for them, and even Adam smash her directly at some point even turning over everyone involved in the raid. So while it's possible a few may have survived by completely going off the radar, it's also very likely they were hunted down. This is why it's so difficult to determine if characters such as Spider Murphy and Shaitan are still alive. So really, this ends us in the same spot as the previous, only adding on the idea that Shaitan could have been hunted down and killed by Arasaka after surviving the raid. So what do you all think has happened to Shaitan? after being presented with this information. Let me know down below if you believe he is alive with Black Hand or dead at the hands of Arasaka. I personally believe that he's incognito with Morgan Black Hand, working towards some objective we will only find out with time. Thank you to every member on screen as well. I appreciate all your support and will continue working my hardest to get quality content out to you all. I hope you all enjoyed and have a great week, Chooms.